Here's a little engine I made following the instructions of fellow YouTuber, Leandro Wagner. You will see a link to Leandro's instructions in the description below. The Sterling engine is an external combustion engine that uses air as a working fluid. By continually moving air between hot and cold parts of its interior, the Sterling engine uses expansion and contraction to produce motion. It is a closed cycle engine in which the same air is heated, cooled, and used indefinitely. The record of history does reveal the existence of hot air engines predating the Stirling engine, but the Stirling engine was an improvement upon earlier designs. Invented in 1816 by Robert Stirling, the Stirling engine was unique in its use of a specialized type of heat exchanger called a regenerator. Located between the hot and cold sides of the engine, the regenerator stored heat by removing it as air passed from the hot to cold side, and then releasing it as air passed back from the cold to hot side. In so doing, efficiency was increased. Hot air engines are a favorite of hobbyist builders and do-it-yourself types. They do not require valves and can easily be constructed at home from basic supplies. The word Stirling has become a sort of ubiquitous label applied to any moving apparatus that derives its motion from a temperature difference. But technically speaking, a device is not a true Stirling if it does not have a regenerator. Here's my shot at conveying the basic operational concept behind a heat or Stirling engine like the one I've constructed. My engine is of a gamma type design. Looking at the drawing, each of the five frames contains a power piston and displacer. The displacer is like a piston, except that it allows air to move around or through it as it forces the air from one side of the engine to the other. The displacer is the gray square on the right in each of the five frames. The power piston is the black square on the left side in each of the five frames. The drawing has been simplified for purposes of illustration. In an actual gamma engine, the top of the displacer cylinder would be connected through an opening or hose to the bottom of the power cylinder. I omitted this important detail in the drawing in order to keep things tidy and easy to follow. Keep this connection in mind, however, as you follow the steps of the process while looking closely at the drawing. Beginning with the first frame, top left, the power piston is at zero degrees. The circles at the bottom of each frame represent the flywheel, and the divisions represent 90 degree increments of rotation based upon the position of the power piston. Keep in mind that 90 degrees of the flywheel rotation will be powered by expansion of the air, while another 90 degrees will be powered by contraction of the air. The remaining 180 degrees of flywheel rotation will be powered by the momentum of the flywheel. The displacer does not supply power to the flywheel. The displacer is moved by the flywheel, and the flywheel is powered or moved by its own momentum and by the force of expanding and contracting air upon the power piston. The displacer's only purpose is to move the air back and forth from hot and cold sides. There must always be a 90 degrees phase difference between the displacer and the power piston, and the engine must rotate in such a direction that the displacer always precedes the power piston. Look closely at the drawing. The displacer is sealed inside of a closed cycle system along with the working fluid. The working fluid is just the air that is sealed inside of the engine. Unlike the displacer, however, the power piston has the working fluid sealed below it and the ambient atmosphere above it. Looking at the upper left corner of the drawing, notice that the power piston is at zero degrees and the displacer is at 90 degrees. Red represents hot air and blue represents cold air. The bottom of the displacer cylinder is heated by a flame. I omitted visual or explicit reference to this detail in the drawing, however, for purposes of conserving space within the layout. The momentum of the flywheel carries the power piston from zero to 90 degrees. At the same time the power piston is going from zero to 90 degrees, the displacer is going from 90 degrees to 180 degrees. Look at the frame in the upper right corner of the drawing and you will notice that at 180 degrees, the displacer is now at the top of its cylinder. When the displacer is at the top of its cylinder, it has pushed all of the cold air out of the top. When the cold air is pushed out of the top of the displacer cylinder, it moves to the bottom of the displacer cylinder where it is heated. The heating air expands and then pushes the power piston from 90 to 180 degrees. Now go to the second row in the drawing and look at the frame on the left. The displacer is back in the middle of its cylinder between the sections with hot and cold air and the power piston is at the top of its cylinder at 180 degrees of flywheel rotation. 
The momentum of the flywheel carries the power piston from 180 to 270 degrees. Now look at the frame on the right, second row in the drawing. The power piston is now in the middle of its cylinder. While the flywheel momentum was carrying the power piston from 180 to 270 degrees, the displacer was carried from 270 to 360 degrees. The displacer is now at the bottom of its cylinder. At the bottom, the displacer has pushed all of the air out of the hot end of its cylinder so that the air is now at the top being cooled. The cooling air contracts and pulls the power piston down from 270 to 360 degrees. See the last frame on the third row in the drawing. As cold contracting air is pulling the power piston from 270 to 360 degrees, the displacer is being moved from 360 degrees back to 90 degrees. The displacer is back to where it was located in the very first frame and the entire cycle starts over. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you found the content of this video to be entertaining and informative. As with mechanical electrostatic generators, hot air engines lend themselves to a broad range of design possibilities limited only by the builder's creativity and imagination. Don't forget to check out the description below for a link to Leandro's tutorial on how to build the device that mine was based upon. Leandro's channel has countless other examples of Stirling engines that you can build from common household supplies. The performance of some of these engines almost defy belief. Leandro has successfully used his designs to generate electricity for LED lighting. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe.